This episode of Getting Table is brought to you by Valhall Hobby. Use code GT2305 to get 5% off any order over $100. That is GT2305. You can find them at ValhallaHobby.com. Please support those that support the channel. Brought to you by some guys on the internet. This is Getting Tabled. With your hosts, Jason the Bruce. You guy! George the Yang. I hope you're all entertained by my ineptitude. Jason, a.k.a. Major Socks. We've been doing this and talking about various stuff. One of the stuff... Now sit back, relax, and get tabled. Hello, future people, and welcome to episode 113 of Getting Tabled with your host. He's back from his walk about the Bruce. Hello, folks. Yes, lovely to be back. Uh, and of course, we do not have Major Socks with us because he seems to think family is more important. Just because he, you know, organized it two months in advance and George still forgot. Uh, but George is here. Hello, George. Hi. <laughs> so, so, so as funny as this is, I, I, I literally just heard uh, Bruce use a, a part of Australian vernacular that was so entrenched in his mind, he didn't even realize he said it until he said it. And I pointed it out. I, I, so. I just said, yeah, nah. Or nah, yeah. No, it was yeah, nah. It, whatever. It's, you know, apparently that's how people in Australia say yes and no. Well, it's exaggerated, but obviously it does happen, yeah. Do you do, that's not an exaggeration if you do it. Um, <laughs> uh, anyways, um, this is not a test second edition. Yeah, so uh, I wanted to start this episode with a few follow-ups. Just because I wasn't here and you guys were kind of following as best you could. And there was a couple of things I kind of thought I'd like to touch on very, very briefly. So this is a test second edition. You weren't really 100% sure what it was because it was just a post talking and it kind of, the post assumes that you know what it is. So this is not a test, is a not Fallout game, basically. Uh, when it first launched four or five years ago, it had a really big surge and had a really big following. And it kind of teed it off after a while because um, it needed some tweaks and it's kind of needed something to kick it back into gear for a while. So this is legitimately a very big deal, um, not just for Black Side Studios, uh, because obviously, like, yes, it's a big deal for them. Somebody outside of the company has gone, hey, could you help me do this? That's a big deal for any company that's growing. Uh, but it's a big deal for this is not a test too, because I would like, it's a, it's, it's a, company that's been doing some fairly major publishing that's doing their work and he's not going to have to do it all himself this time um so that that's a pretty big deal uh the other thing i wanted to touch on which i want to thank our patreon because they did actually correct you on this uh what's well, not correct good but they, they explained something to you uh because when we were talking about end song you were like i don't really get why they, like you were kind of like this seems like a really bad deal i don't get it um which, 100%, I completely get why you were saying that. Uh, you were wrong. But um, from the picture, like the pictures of the minis didn't really make it clear how large they were. Uh, and they are large um, tag size miniatures. And that's where your price comes from. The, the insect guy in particular is big. Uh, like oh, he's, like, yeah. like he's, he's decently sized big. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that, that's why the price was more than you were thinking like it's just two minis in a book and it's like, well yes it is but they are big minis they're on 55 mil bases so that should give you an idea of how big they actually were they were probably almost twice the size you thought they were uh and then finally luna um not so much i wanted to make a correction on this but i just wanted to very quickly see the original luna set um was kind of done as a bit of a pet project and it came with five minis aside because that's what you were supposed to have. Um, but because the game has one particular dice that's custom and they were getting it from a source that was very expensive um, and everything that was in the box, basically, long story short, it, it was one of those things that you really had to want to buy because it, was, it wasn't really good value from a sense of a starter set because the starter sets are supposed to be... It's not that it was bad value, it just wasn't good value. Uh, it was just kind of, eh, 
And like, there was no retailers that were ever going to cover it because there just wasn't enough markup in it um, because it was too expensive to, to produce. So they've made a, a new starter set that's a bit more streamlined. Uh, you've got like your tokens and that, and they're still, they've actually found a new source for those dice to help reduce costs down uh, because that was a big thing. Those dice were costing them like $2 a piece or something, which when you're buying them in bulk is ridiculously expensive. Uh, so they found somebody else to be able to do that for them. Uh, and then literally everything else is being done in house now uh, because they're doing their own casting and everything. So that wasn't so much a correction, just something I kind of wanted to point out. Because it was a big deal because, I mean, Luna is one of those games that sounds really interesting. It's it's fighting on the moon. We had actually spoken about it before. Uh, it's just that you didn't remember. Um, but a new starter set that's a little bit more cost effective will make it a little bit more attractive, especially for retailers that want to stock it and stuff, and it makes it a little easier for them. Newly received or noteworthy information, especially about recent or important events. And we're starting this no. one off with some pretty much th this broke last night. And this is yeah, this, a this, really big this deal. is the kind of thing. Yeah, we don't normally talk about stuff like this because it's usually <laughs> the worst thing we talk about is you know, company going out of business or someone has stolen money well through a Kickstarter platform. You also don't or something hear like about that. this as much. Especially at Gen Con. Yeah. Yeah. So um yesterday, uh three hundred thousand dollars of TCG cards stolen from Gen Con. Yep. Um the, And this the is a article big deal was updated. for the name that's involved too, yeah. because this is the yeah. Disney game that's been in court for the last Well six no, months. no, they confirmed that um the the Disney game was not stolen. And oh. that it is not going to affect av availability. They have not identified what the game is oh, that was that. stolen. Yeah. No, yeah, they've not identified it. So, But it's not the Disney game. Don't worry. You can get your Disney game, the quote-unquote magic killer. Uh, the only thing that's going to kill magic okay. is Wizards of the Coast, not Disney. Disney can't do that um, unless they buy Wizards of the Coast and then kill it. Uh, <laughs> but by the look um, of the picture, and purely based on the picture, it looks like this guy has just walked up made it look, and, and he's, he's done the thing that all really good thieves do, which is they've just pretended that they're supposed to be there. Because he's literally yeah, walking oh yeah. out with a pallet of it. Um, yeah, he's got a pallet jack with the pallet. He's wearing khaki pants, black shirt. I'm guessing if it was a better resolution photo, it would be logoed like, you know, one of the vendors. Probably. So that no one's going to look at him twice because, you know, he's got a logoed shirt that's appropriate and probably just stroll on out of there. No big deal. Yeah. Um, and if you look at the photo, I mean, he looks pretty uh, low key about the whole thing. Yeah. This this is somebody that's done this. This is a professional thief, a hundred percent. This is somebody that knows what they're doing. Um, in saying that, he's also looking directly at the camera, so maybe he doesn't know what he's doing. But yeah, this is a really really big deal. I mean, yes, Gen Con is a huge event, but there's a lot of really small people here. Um. Like, it's it's an indie thing, more so than a Games Workshop thing. I mean, we don't really cover TCG cards as much. I mean, I've done a couple of videos on them, but it's not really our forte. Um, by the look of the boxes, I suspect that they're a Bandai card game. Just looking it's, at it's, it. Could, it could well, be magic, but I don't think it is. I think it's Bandai, so it's my guess is that it's well, like a Dragon Ball or so One Piece or something. Sure, yeah, like, you know, it's a very, like, you know, ha having had a store and, you know, worked with the guys, you know, that own a store, you know, like, seeing the product come in, like, that's a very nondescript what the box comes in. Yeah. Um, just with what's been available, because this is, I'll, I'll add this in a little bit, too, uh, Magic the Gathering released a Lord of the Rings set for Magic the Gathering, oh, and there yeah. was a one-of-one one card printed of the one ring, the only one, some guy pulled it, Post Malone was like, 2.6 mil, cool, it's um, mine. All right, cool. I could be so wrong. So if this I is some of that kind this, of stuff. I could be wrong on this. I don't think it's the only version of that. It's It was a special version of the card that was one of one. No, the card says one of one. Yes, but it's that on version the card. of the card. You can get a one ring card, but there was a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, like that one specific one. Yes. Yeah, that one specific one is the only one. Yeah. So... On a side note, I'm glad someone like Post Malone, who's a big fan of the game, who has the resources, yeah. was able to 
because that card will be preserved. If, with you know, Post so. Malone, I don't know Post Malone very well, but from what I've seen, he's someone that actually genuinely has an appreciation for it. Oh, it's yeah. not one yeah. of these so. celebrities that's like, oh, I'm using this and look how fancy I am, like uh, Logan Paul, for example. Uh, this is someone that genuinely has a passion for it. So it's, yeah, going to be preserved. Yeah. So, but yeah, um, big, big news, uh, huge theft. I mean, and in the, in the world of, you know, we don't hear about this kind of thing a lot. No. You know, usually it's usually intellectual theft or stuff like that, not an actual like heist of physical product. Because if you look at some of the board games and some of the other sets, like they take up a lot of space. That's a huge thing to steal if you're going to steal a lot of it. So. Um, um, I would probably, uh, de- depending on physically where in the event this took place, because this looks like it's on the floor somewhere. Like th- this has very clearly happened during setup at some point. Oh yeah, because well, if you look at the the Twitter post that's on that page, there's a whole bunch of pallets there. So this is like so it's at the the storage right grudge. Yeah, yeah. So Gen Con's probably going to have to be facing this. Because that, that would have to come down to Gen Con security to some extent. Yeah, so, so, I mean, some security guards just like, wouldn't shock yeah, you're good. Well, as as many people are running, I mean, the, the guy picked the right time to do it when everyone's running yeah. around, you know, it's a little hectic and crazy. Oh, I got my pallet jack, I'm grabbing this pallet of stuff. Yeah. No one's really going to look twice with all the chaos going on. I mean, reality, I mean, with the exception of looking at the camera, the guy was, was pretty uh, smart when he did that, so... Yeah. My hope is that they find him, but the chances of that happening is probably pretty low. In saying yeah. that, they will eventually go up for sale somewhere. That'll be how they find him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Somebody seems to have, like, 15 boxes of this, and they don't normally sell this. Hmm, that's unusual. We'll, we'll have to see. We'll move on to something a little bit, well, no less shocking, but a little bit more positive. Mantic Games. Now, I have literally list, listed this as Warpath Need You, uh, and this is literally what they posted it as. This is, a, this is a company that's sitting here saying, yeah, we kind of need your help on this one. And this is something that doesn't usually happen. So, a little bit of background information on this. Warpath is a game that's been around for a while. It's kind of, it was kind of their second big game that they put, put out. So this is their equivalent to 40k. Um, at one point, it was going to real. It kind of teed it off, and they haven't really done anything with it for a couple of years at this point. Uh, and there's been a few people, especially lately, that's kind of been going, I wonder what, this go- what they're doing here. They have to do something with Warpath because nothing was happening with it. And if you don't do anything with, with the game, it does eventually die. So for roughly the last 18 months or so, They've actually been working on changing the game. Um, the reason for this is because when Warpath, Warpath first came out, Firefight came out in that rule book, And they were kind of like essentially versions of each other. Um, so there wasn't really much of a big difference. Now, they recently relaunched Firefight last year. And listeners may remember that that actually won Game of the Year from Beast of War last year or on Tabletop last year. Um, so it was very successful. Strangely, Mantic have not mentioned it a hundred million times every chance they get. Um, so the next question was, well, what are they going to do with Warpath? Well, they decided that they needed to separate the games a little bit because they were basically versions of each other. Um, they may as well have been like to the point where you could play Warpath as Firefight and fight. Like there was almost nothing different between them. Um, their answer was, well, we're going to go onto an epic scale. They were going to go down to 15 mil. You can actually see some examples there of minis that they had been working on. Uh, and for 15 mil, the detail in them looks phenomenal. Yeah, that looks that looks pretty fantastic. Like, I was thinking, like, the, the 15 mil were more like a 2830, and then the, the big guys were, like, you know, bust size stuff like this. Yeah. Um, but here's the problem with what their plan was. What happened a couple of weeks ago, George? Uh, uh, War, Warhammer uh, Epic. Yeah. 40k Epic. Which has kind of so, taken the wind out of their sails, and now they're kind of in a situation of like, we really wanted to do, do this. Do we do this? We yeah. don't actually know if this is a smart idea anymore. 
so so here here's my thought you will hate my thought on this but here's my thought how they test the waters right mm -hmm. they do a kickstarter campaign for just the two-player starter set oh, yeah. at the 15 mil scale 100 and if it goes through and it's a very successful kickstarter like they raise three hundred thousand percent of what they're needing or whatever okay we go through and do this if and don't don't set like you know a twenty thousand dollar goal. You're a big company. Do do a big goal, you know. Do Something do a chunk of money, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if if that goal is met at that, you know, and you know, obviously give the backers a deal, like you know, seventy five percent of the actual yeah. cost. Yeah. So and, and if it's a su successful Kickstarter, then guess what? Move it to fifteen mil and release the line like that. If if it's like no. Then, then you know, like th that's why I'm saying, like, do it at a substantial amount of, like, you know, is it going to fund or is it not going to fund? Kind of level mm. to 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 see what the 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 level of interest is. Um, as much as you're a proponent of, that's not what Kickstarter is for. Is for these big companies to release a new product that they can afford to. This is I think that would be a great way to is. test. But this, this I, I, is I literally th like this is a product that they don't know if it's going to be successful or not anymore. Kickstarter is a hundred percent for that. Um, there's only a probably a slight. See, Mantic used to be on Kickstarter quite frequently, and they haven't been on Kickstarter for a while now. Um, kind of around the time where I started going, everybody kind of needs to stop doing, it. and it's not everybody. Like it's there's certain companies that exploit it too much, and I use the word exploit mm -hmm. on purpose. I know people don't like it when I use that word, but it, it is true in my opinion. Um, but Mantic cooled off on Kickstarter all by themselves, pretty much. Um, when they were talking about Kickstarter as a possibility for this, they were like, well, we might have to go back to Kickstarter for it if we're going to do it. Um, because it literally is what Kickstarter is for. Uh, and if the Kickstarter fails, there's their answer. Uh, the other yep. option, which we talked off camera about, is that they could take this to digital. Um, now, there's actually put out a community vote, and it's just a one-question vote. I'm going to bring it up on screen. And basically, should we proceed? Um, your first option is, I would support Warpath as a full game system. Give me core units in hard plastic, terrain, and physical books, even if it's required to crowdfund launch. Uh, sorry, even if it requires a crowdfunding launch. Your second option is I would play Warpath, uh, but a more modest release is fine. I'd be happy with miniatures and other materials, such as resin and a smaller, tighter range. Uh, CO cast was mentioned, but it's not mentioned on here. There's also one, I'd love Warpath to be Mantic's first fully digital game with miniatures released as STLs. That, I think, is an idea that has some merit uh, because it reduces all of the costs down from their perspective um and also works as a bit of a because if it doesn't go off then again they don't have that they've got their they're, they're, test they're literally not out anything and the last one is that i've read the rules and warpath isn't for me and here's the thing the thing with warhammer epic at the moment is that we really don't know what the rules are there's been a couple of teasers of what the rules might be, but we don't know. They have made the entire rule book available. Sorry, the rules manuscript available for free for you to read through. Because they want to know if this is worth continuing or not. Because obviously there's already been quite a significant amount of money put into this. 18 months paying people to develop it. Including, I didn't cover this a second ago, Alessio Cavatori, Cavatore, who is not a small per who is not a small deal that is a very big deal um like literally Warhammer 40k um I like the fact that they've gone to the community for this like regardless of yeah, which I direction this goes I don't think they can lose out on this like if they decide not to proceed then they win because they didn't risk m big money into a, a into a product that didn't go anywhere um, if they go yeah. ahead and it's successful, so on and so forth. Well, and it's a very much the, you know, the, the, these are the people that are going to buy this. Are they going to buy this? Yes or no? Yep. Oh, they're saying they're not going to buy this. Let's not do that, you know? <laughs> 
Um, so uh, well, I would you know, also, how, like, how it, I would recommend as many people to do this as possible, but only answer with your real answer. So if you're like, yes, I think you should do this, but I'm probably not going to buy it, then maybe that's what you should say is I'm probably not going to mm-hmm. buy it. Uh, in my case, I'm going to fill it out and say I would recommend it as a digital product. I think that's the smartest way forward. Um, even to the point where I would argue that they could probably even still go to Kickstarter with it. I mean, everybody else goes to Kickstarter with digital products. Yeah. I don't think that's entirely fair for Mantic to do. Um, if it does go full fledge, then yes, Kickstarter, hundred percent. Like there's, I would not be taking the risk on a full fledge product without going to Kickstarter with this, uh, especially with, let's be fair, despite everything, everybody's going to say that they're just copying 40 K anyway because that's what people do, regardless of whether it's true or not. Well, let, let, let's be honest. You can make that argument for any game, you know, ever after, you know, what where, you know, Games Workshop started and what they've become. Yeah, exactly. Right? You, 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 you could argue, you know, you know, Drop Fleet Commander is just like, you know, a different version of Battlefleet Gothic, you know, blah, blah, you know, like, uh, what's that one game, Socks Like, uh... Dystopian Wars? Uh, no, 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 no. It's uh, the other space faring one or whatever. That's I can't remember. Drop Fleet Commander. No, there, there was another space game. I thought he had that he was selling off to do Drop Fleet. Legion. Maybe that was no, not Legion. It was uh, maybe someone else. Like I, I thought someone from like Hot LZ days had this. Like it was a spaceship game. It must have been one of the other guys. And I don't think it was Socks. No. Because Drop Fleet Commander was his first non-historical game. We've discussed that in the past. Well, no, Drop Drop Zone before. technically was. Oh, sorry, Drop Zone. Yeah. Um, otherwise, it could be Firestorm Armada. Maybe. I mean, that's probably the other. Yes, one. that's it. Firestorm Armada. Thank you. Yeah, but that wouldn't have been Socks. That's also owned by the people that own um, Dystopian Wars, though. Or at least it is yeah, now. So. Anyway, I, um, this is a really big deal, and I. The fact that they've gone to the community and just been a hundred percent upfront about this, which they could, they could have left this internally, they could have just swept this mm-hmm. under the rug and never mentioned it again. But for sure, there's a possibility that this could be a thing. I actually think it was a really clever idea to differentiate the two games. Um, it's kind of a shame that it kind of bit them in the butt the way that it obviously has. Um. But I like the fact that they've come out and they've gone, look, this is the issue. This is what we've done. And we'd still like to do it, but, and we need you. And they're just being completely upfront about why they're asking. So, hey, give us your opinion on this. No, it's not. We want to do this. We don't know if we should. If you tell us not to do it, we won't do it. There's no if, buts, or maybes. They're just telling you what they're asking. Yep. There's no slyness. There's, it's just upfront. And I like that. As opposed to, we have this idea that we'd like to do. What do you think of this idea? And it's because of everything. I, I like the fact that they're just up front. But moving on. Yeah, moving on. Uh, some really great looking minis from uh, Project Warhorse. Yeah, so this is actually from Victoria Miniatures. We've looked at Victoria Miniatures before. Uh, Project Warhorse is the name of the campaign. And this is Rough Riders for all of your other sci-fi armies um it it could be 40k it could also be many other things where they ride on horses and have sci-fi weapons so rough riders was re-released at some point last year i don't like they were like kdm miniatures pretty much Uh, and they are doing equivalents both in digital and physical for all of your other armies now i'm going to get all of these ones wrong i quite like the desert scorpions one though uh, I don't remember what they're called in 40k, but here they're called Desert Scorpions. I love the look of these. They're amazing. Um, there was a comment from somebody that, that they should have been camels, but no, I think these are amazing. They, they work perfectly fine. Um, I think the Sebekis are meant to be the Huskals. Maybe? I'm probably saying that wrong. I quite like those as well, like the wind and everything. It looks really, really nice. Uh, Van Diemen's World Devil Riders. So these are obviously designed around Australia. 
Um, I've been tempted to buy some of these Van Diemen's miniatures for a really stupidly long time. Um, I I, I, I would have. argue that that the uh, the Van Diemen's, I would say those are uh, also uh, modeled after uh, U.S. Rough Riders. Oh no, they're one hundred percent rough. They're one hundred percent model on ours. No, because Teddy Roosevelt had a uniform exactly like that when he was a Rough Rider during the Panama Canal. Yes, but they're literally wearing the Anzac hat. It's the slouch hat, which is the the Roosevelt hat. had one too. Oh. Roosevelt had one too. I can tell, tell you. I can tell you for a fact that these are based on Australia because that's what the company was told. Told you. <laughs> that's uh, so being I'm, an Australian I'm company. Sorry, yeah, but you're wrong. <laughs> you, I get what you're saying. It, that there are other countries that have them, but these are based on Australians, and it's yeah. But they no don't matter. Country. Those other countries don't matter. Well, if you say so. <laughs> Um, there's also Victorian guard riders, which are like very much your like they very much look English with your red coats. Uh, there was a question about whether they should have been blue coats according to history. I don't really know or care for that matter. Um, I really love these. These are amazing. The border world rangers are awesome too. They kind of look like green beret rough riders. Hold the phone. That's crazy. What have you just seen? I'm just. Holy, that's so down at the 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 Project Warhorse add-ons. Oh, I got. I have no um, idea. that can't be right. Is, is that per? Because it, it says um, thirty writer companies plus three hundred ninety U.S. dollar. Like that's just for like thirty writers, not all. Uh, no, because the other one says five writer squads for. That can't be right. Six squads of five riders. Um, Six squads of five riders for 270. Holy cow. Yeah, that's probably... Because if you was to do... If you was to time 75 by 6, that's going to be a lot more than that. That's a crazy deal. Yeah. 75 by 6. It's 450 So you're saving yourself about 60 bucks. It's not quite yeah, a free still... squad, but it's very close. That, that is a flat-out crazy deal, in my opinion. Especially like, when, like, for you, it's only 270 bucks. Well, approximately. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's crazy. Because, like, what, that, that's a horse kit, right? So if you were to put that in terms of Games Workshop, that's a $70 box. Yeah, 100%. Um... Gee, I wonder if there's a reason why they're doing fifty-eight thousand dollars at the moment. But these are like these are designed to fit very well with forty k. Obviously, I mean, there's other things that you oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but th- that is the target audience for this. Um, I'm very tempted to do the digital, like one hundred percent. I'm very tempted, despite the fact that I don't know if I would ever use them because I don't play forty k. Uh, but I kind of really want some dev- some Van Diemen's. World Devils. I'd just love to build it and then paint them, but I don't. I don't have time for extra stuff. Um, I'd know. Yeah, <laughs> the, the the prices on this are really really good, uh, especially the, the prices we're looking at here are for the physical ones. So this is for your your high detailed resin. You can also just get like head kits and stuff to convert other things, but like they're really nice. Really, really nice. Yeah, so so lo- a little further down, they have a scale photo of their stuff, and then it's obviously the Games Workshop model that's just a silhouette. Oh, no, I couldn't but, that. But it's, that. It, it's <laughs> just a silhouette, so you can't, you know, they're the same size. Like, this is a, a, a one-to-one replacement. There is no... Yeah. These just happen to be Grimdark Guardsmen. That, that could fit any world, because everybody does Grimdark now anyway. Um, wow, even yeah. their uh, projected shipping is is crazy cheap. Yeah, and ha- he, here's what I like. These are actually being manufactured in three different locations. So right, yeah. Postage like, yeah, there's, works out to be it, cheaper because they've already organized it ahead of So if you're from the U.S., you don't have to pay for us to ship it from Australia because it's being made in the U.S. If you're in the U.K. or Europe, 
then you don't have to pay to get it shipped from the US or Australia because it's being made in Finland. Sorry, not Finland. Netherlands. Netherlands. Um, Asia's probably the only one that in theory falls out there, but the fact of the matter is that would actually be posted from Australia for dirt cheap. Well, dirt cheap-ish. Well, reasonably. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, these are really cool. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. If I had the desire for for the army of these, I would I would go for these and not get the Games Workshop models. Period. Yeah, there's so many decent guard models out there now. It's ridiculous. Uh, I mean, I've wanted to do a Catachan's army for such a stupid amount of time. It's not funny. Um, Maybe that's why Games Workshop hasn't updated those models because they're like everyone else is doing a better job than we are. Let's not even waste money on it. Let's do other things like kill off firstborns and do primaris only now. We haven't talked about that, actually. Yes, they did kill Force first ones recently. <laughs> and hey, you know what? <clears throat> Everybody is getting bitter about this, and I'm sitting here going, you know what? I really don't mind. I actually think this is a smart idea. They should have done this to begin with. The only problem <laughs> is, is that they said they were never going to do it, which was very clearly a right. lie. Everybody knew this was coming. I don't care who you are. You knew this was coming. All of us knew this was coming. That's why they were never that's literally. That's literally like me telling you, Bruce, I'm never going to drink whiskey again. Yeah. Did you? You know that's a lie. (laughs) They, they just held off for four years. The smartest. I understand why they made the decision to do the whole Primaris thing, but I still feel the same way now that I did four years ago, which is what they should have done: is slowly replace them one kid after the other rather than trying to pretend that they're different things. Because they were never different things. They were always yep. the same thing. So. Anyway. Anyways. um, Yeah. Should we talk about the elephant in the room? Oh, yeah. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. It's not very often I, t- I mention that we're going to be discussing a news story ahead of time. But I definitely did with this one. Uh, and I have, so, so- I have quotes. <laughs> So, so just to give uh, the the people who haven't been following us for way too long uh, some context, back on the Hot LZ when we only talked about Drop Fleet Commander, it was literally every episode we were talking about a different way to the track the information on bases, different bases, different base kits, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, here we have July 31st, TT Combat released a photo of... Clear acrylic discs with lines on it. There's no hit points tracked. There's no um, statuses tracked. There's no orbits tracked. Um, what else is tracked? Nothing. That was it's, it, it's, right? Well, sorry. Um, orbit. Yeah, no, that's it. Yeah. So all we have is firing arcs now. Nothing else is tracked on that. Yeah. And, and, and we found out this is now intentional because apparently he's getting a huge kick out of this. Lewis has not released anything about what is replacing uh, spikes, spike statuses, orbit layers, hit points, none of that. None yep. of that has been hinted at. All we have is, here's our new acrylic bases, which, don't get me wrong, I think this is okay. I think having a dashboard off to the side has always been the better idea to track the stuff for the ship on a game. Instead of fiddling with the dial, the base, every single time something happens because you're moving it. What? No, this is. I think this is something that should have been done from the, the get-go. No offense to what you designed there, Dave. Look, but this is what it should have been. I don't disagree and with you. Should have been... we've, we've been fairly open about our opinions on the bases for a long time. I mean, on one count, it is still to this day, I would argue, one of the most innovative base designs that's ever been done. They were incredibly Absolutely. intelligent but the problem is they didn't work well they were very yep. fiddly uh, i mean they worked with how they were supposed to work but because everything was so small it just it wasn't fun for anybody anybody mm-hmm. with decent sized hands it was impossible i had fairly average sized hands and i still had problems with them most i have, people I have fat in, fingers and i could, yeah I, I couldn't stand it of all of the people um, i've played this game with i've only ever played one that didn't use dice to track everything. One person, and that was a Patreon of ours. 
Um, and there's a reason why there's at least four other companies that did replacement dials for them because mm -hmm. there's at least three options out there that are really good that they could just, you know, steal the idea from. Um, so whenever anything gets changed in the game, the reaction from the community is always predictable. Uh, it just explodes and everybody goes, ah, how dare you? It, and, and this was insanely predictable. And we'll comment more about that later when we talk about quotes. Yeah. Because I, I, I have but, quotes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it's a, and, and, and part of the reasons why too, which th this is a really, a really key thing here um, that we've uh, been exposed to in the last, I'll just say five years, supply chain. If something happens in your supply chain, it screws everything up. Yeah, and uh, in, in, in my real, externally. yeah, in my real life, doing IT, one of my clients needed a server. COVID happened. Server upgrade was pushed off because everything was not available. Yeah. After COVID, the server was still not available. Still not available. Still not available. They're now on cl uh, cloud servers because of that whole process of the physical material parts were never made available again. Which is or horrible. they weren't made available in quantities that they're easy to acquire. Yeah. So and, and what all Lewis is doing here is he's sorry, Louie, all he's doing is he's bringing this in house so that he controls his supply chain more. He, it's not just totally that though. Sense. He's also fixing what is, uh, there's been, too early on, all of the response to this was different versions of how could you do this. But I'm yeah. sorry, 90% of that community, and I would argue the people that commented on this initially, all recognized that these bases had to change. We've all been complaining about this for a long time. Since before TT Combat opened it. So... Louis is also fixing a problem here as well. This is something that probably should have been done a couple of years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. But at the same time, they would have already had all of these bases that they wanted to get rid of first, I suppose. Yeah. Because that's a cost. Uh, I mean, there was nothing wrong with them in theory, but they never really worked right. Not not the way that they were supposed to. Now, well, and, and so... Yeah, and I, 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 I'm gonna throw out here because uh, I played with a guy that's like this. I am now becoming the guy that's like this. Um, at a certain age, you know, your eyes stop working so well, and you start mm -hmm. needing things like bullet bifocals. One of the guys I played with, he was in his fifties. He had reading glasses, and every he loved playing the game, but every single time we played, he complained about the bases because he could not read them. Yep, and I am now of that age where the, my the optometrist was like, and here's what it would look like if you were wearing bifocals. And I was like, well, crap, I'm of the age of bifocals. So those, those tiny bases, like it's not sure for your 20 somethings and stuff like that. It's great. 30 somethings. It's fine. Older guys who still like playing the games. It's an issue for us. And I was always behind the whole, I'd rather have a dashboard that I can mark and like have, and if my opponent wanted to see it, I could hand it to him instead of us messing with the ship, you know, possibly changing his position, et cetera, et cetera. I think tracking all the hit points, the layers, all that stuff on a dashboard separate from the ship was the way to go from the get go. Yeah. And I, we, we've talked about that a few times. Realistically, so. there's one of two ways in theory, this can go at this stage. And again, I have quotes. We'll get to there. One of them is dashboards. Personally, that's the way I would prefer it to go because the other option is tokens and it's going to be bucket loads of tokens. And I don't think anybody really wants that. Either way, my, they can my, sell these things. But My my uh, my fix for you know using those bases back in the day were uh, the low pony beats, essentially tokens, and so many tokens. It was... It was stupid, I, yeah. It worked better for me, and you know some of the people I played with they liked it better because it was more visually visible. Still having to fiddle with the bases, but I I think a tracking dashboard, you know, like you know, a flip dial for like the hit points and like 
you know, a little slider to like, you know, here it is with the sticker, you know, like, yep. or something. But yeah, they have them snap together. So it's like, here's your battle group. Yep. Or something. So. Oh, that's the other thing oh. you've got to track is the battle group. Yes. Um, okay. Yep. One more thing. No, two more things before we get to quotes. Uh, because I have quotes. Um, so first things first, in the Drop Fleet Commander community, Michelle actually posted a picture talking about the different replacements that are available for this. Um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, that that is something that you can go and talk about. Uh, there's a couple of different companies that he's pointed out here, uh, and I want to go through. I, I believe I've captured all of them. So the first one was actually from the comments, uh, and this is a 3D printable version of the base, uh, but it's bigger and easier to use, basically. Um, actually, a really cool-looking design as well. Also kind of helps with the larger ships so that you can actually, you know... I was actually... I was actually... Them. I saw that the other day. Um, yeah. I, I really like this. Uh, there's different sizes, obviously, for different ships. Uh, we also have one here from Litgo. Uh, this is one that I almost bought several times, actually. Um, I never did. Also, hey, look, it's the Flying Saucer Dice Tower that, that, that I almost bought a few times. Uh, but no, the, the, um, the Starship bases, they're, they're basically a very similar idea. It's got your firing arcs actually sculpted as part of the design, uh, and then you've got little tokens to represent pretty much everything. And then finally, I believe this is the one that we have recommended more than anything else. Laser Forge Miniatures have the best design on the market right now and have done since about six months after the company launched the, the game initially. Um, these mm-hmm. were always the ones that we recommended back in our Hot LZ days. I have a huge collection of this right now because I bought a couple of sets when he relaunched them a couple of years back. Uh, he did take this off the market at one point um, because he was under the opinion that, it was well, my I believe the opinion was just that he didn't think that was going to be selling anymore. Uh, and then there was a whole heap of people that were like, please, I want to buy this. Can you please sell this? Um, yep. I had always held off on this because me getting it from him was stupidly expensive. Um, but we ended up finding a way around that. So, And I have used it. Yeah, it's amazing. No, yeah, because, you know, there's various colors that, you know, it was an insert that worked with the, the base that you got. Yep. So you put the insert in, battle group colors, boom. Then it was rather large, you know, given the scale of just, you know, tokens you would pull out and put in to change spikes and orbital layers. Mm-hmm. And then then there was a dice to mark the head points. It was still fiddly. It was still all on the base, but it was less fiddly than the original design of the base. So, yeah. um, If you're looking for options and you're not willing to wait to see what TT Combat's doing, this is the options that I would recommend that you look at. But time for some quotes. So we're pretty lucky. We have a fairly decent relationship with TT Combat. That started initially between conversations between us and Lewis. Um, I now have a I now have a connection with Dave Louis as well. And Dave. Oh, Dave and well, yeah, true. Uh, we did have a couple of conversations with Dave early on. Um, but I actually I, I talk with Lewis fairly regularly. Sorry, I talk with Louis fairly regularly as well now. Um, so I reached out to Louis and I said, "We're preparing to record on Sunday." Wondering if you have anything that you're willing to say on the plans for the new fleet bases. How things are being tracked, etc. from now on. Tokens, dashboards, something else entirely. I realise that your answer may be no comment, because that's very clearly an option that he may give. Uh, But I wanted to at least ask so that we had the chance of reporting accurately. Because the thing I didn't want to do is sit here and guess, and then kind of either throw things off because we've suggested something that sounds better than what they do, or have it come across like we're being moaning and stuff about it, which we haven't been. But Because, I mean, there is a negative side to this. The negative side is obvious. Um, uh, the answer I got was pretty much what I expected, but also not. I'm sorry, man. It's a no comment this time. Just grab everyone a bag of popcorn and enjoy the comments. We've got plans. So here's the thing we're not touching on the press around this 
and the comments around this, with two exceptions, have been really bad. It's been extremely negative um, because it's a change. Of course, it's been extremely negative. Uh, there's been two exceptions to that. Michelle's post in the community has been filled with nothing but um, suggestions of how how they can fix this and like other ways that you can get around this. Um, like, because he was like, these are items that you can buy elsewhere. And they were like, yes, I also know these ones. Uh, and there's been a few people that's been like, well, yeah, but this has also been kind of a problem for a while. There's been some people that actually did acknowledge that. Not as many as I think probably should have. But, uh, and also the equivalent post on the Dropfleet um, Discord channel. So there has actually been some positive things come out of this. But here's the other thing. No press is bad press. Whilst that is not entirely true in real life, because I'm sorry, bad press is bad press. Um, in the case of this, I think this is actually... Before I finish that sentence, early on, George, you, me, and Socks was talking about this, and we were, I'm going to call us out on this, we were of the opinion that TD Combat had made a very big mistake. Do you remember what we said that mistake was? Mm. Obviously not. Not off the top of my head, no. Okay, it wasn't the fact that they changed the bases because we've all have been of the opinion that that needed to happen a long time ago. Oh, I've. They they could have like released a new idea every quarter. I would have been like, yeah. As long as it's like you know trying yeah. to improve, I I'll, I'll be behind it. Um, <laughs> the thing that we said was a mistake, and we was of the opinion that it's an oversight because of Gen Con and stuff, uh, was that oh was that they didn't reveal the answer to the tokens at the same time. Because then all of this yeah. discussion would have been positive as opposed to you've messed up, which is not what they've done, but it's how it looked. Um, but judging on what Louis said, this was a deliberate choice. Like, he's very clearly not surprised by the community response. He's loving the press, despite how negative it feels, because it has been very negative. I'm trying to make yeah. it very clear. Um, and he's like very clearly loving it. It's clearly done exactly what he wanted to do. Because, let's be clear, I think this is the most anybody has spoken about Drop Fleet Commander for probably a year and a half at this point. Mm. I'd say this is probably the most discussion Drop Fleet Commander has had since the sale of Hawk 2 TT Combat. Like even like when they released the um the 1.5 rule set, like nobody really talked about it. Because no. I mean we did, we covered it because very passionate about the well, game. What... Also we argued that it's that was a mistake. I stand by that. Sorry, Louis. I still think it, it was a mistake. Yeah, it, it should have been one one point five. It should have been like one. They should have done a full 0, second like, edition. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, yeah. I understand why they didn't, and that that's fine. That's but yeah, this has got everybody talking about the game, and it's not just a matter of everybody talking about the game. They're all talking about how to fix the problem, mm -hmm. meaning that all of these people, because they wouldn't be talking like that if they weren't thinking, mm, I'd love to play that again. Or they are people that are playing it and want to get more people playing it. So now, how do I fix this problem? Or how do I fix what we assume is the problem? Um, I don't know what TT Combat are going to do. I really hope that they don't just do tokens because there's going to be so many of them and it's just going to be a nightmare. Uh, that would be the so, cheapest way for yeah. them to fix it. I want them to do dashboards. And I'd yeah, like them to it, do it, it digitally. I want them to do it digitally so people can just print them out. And hey, maybe they can make a, a fancy version they could sell on the website. Um, but knowing the history of, like, because the last time they invested in the whole heap of cards, it became a problem because they needed to update them and they couldn't. So I'd rather avoid that route. Design something yeah, well, that can be done as a physical, like, MDF product 
that they can sell for those that want it, and everybody that wants to print a digital one can print the boring-looking digital one. That's what I'm hoping. That so, so here's here's what I want to see. Like th- 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 this, I think would probably be the the fastest, easiest way to do it, right? So Dave designed this really, like, let's be honest, really intelligent base, right? It's it was groundbreaking at the time. Yeah. So take that base, turn it into a dashboard, right? So you have this square, okay, right? And there's a circle indent. You put a sticker on it. You snap the wheel on just like it's the base. And then you can manipulate it completely separately. But then it has, like, you know, it's a little bigger. It's a little more user-friendly. You know, and it, you know, you still do the little pegging. You can track the hit points on a peg. Make the peg bigger. But it's, but yeah, make the peg bigger. Make it so that, you know, it's easy to hold in your hands. You know, give it some tactile resistance you know like like essentially like a a plastic playing card that is clicky it, it's it's tactile it it you know you can manipulate it easily and it just doesn't go crazy they you know, sell make the peg bigger actually i'll show you what they sell This is a product from TT Combat. These are wound dials. Uh, and these are made by pretty much every company under the sun. Yep. These just happen to be acrylic ones. And then basically there's a number here. And you turn this around. And the number changes. Like it's the most simple design known to man. And it works. They're really nice. You can buy these in several different colors. I bought these initially for... Uh, entry for city and then immediately changed my idea of how i was going to do it so i've never used them which is fine um but there's there's your starting point for your idea yeah let's let's yeah like have a square have one dial that tracks spikes and layers right and then another one that tracks the hit points Make it smaller than this, because otherwise your dashboard's going to be like this for each ship. Um, I, 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 I'm thinking like you know the size of like you know a standard size playing card. Yep, I'd like, like I said, I'd like to see them go from two fronts. I'd like something printable yep. from the Dropfleet Commander website that prints when you make your list on the builder, and it prints as dashboards with whatever the most current information is at the time. Maybe not so much the rules, but it shows whatever hit points and stuff. That, not hit points, whatever. Yeah, hit points that the ship has and stuff. Uh, but then, yeah. so that they can make money, a fancy version that people can buy from the website. Because not everybody will. If they design something on the website and that's the only way they, re- they release it, there's going to be a lot of people that will just keep on using what they've already got, even if they don't like it. Because most people don't like the existing base and they seem to have forgotten that. Yeah, no, if, if if they release a fancy version, like, even if it's like, you know, here's the Dreadnought dial, here's the Battleship dial, here's your, you know, heavy cruiser, cruiser, light cruiser, here's your frigate, here's your, you know, like, if they have, I will go buy a Dreadnought one, I will buy the Battleship ones, I will, you know, I will get them. Oh, uh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah it's... Lord yeah. knows I'm already due for a TT Combat order at some point, I'm just putting it off because... Entropy City needs to be my focus. Right? Um, yeah. Moving on to yeah. nothing on. T- T- uh, Drop Fleet Commander related uh, with TT Combat. Uh, we kind of got a couple of new sets releasing for uh, Carnival, uh, yep. Mythical Beasts, and Holy Summons. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about the Mythical Beasts first because I'm definitely leaving the Holy Summons till last. So this is a new Doctor set. These are more converted monster creatures that they've done. So we've got like a a horse Pegasus looking thing, which is very, very clearly been stitched together from sea monsters and stuff that you get in the in the canals at Venice. And it's real. I I love how very clearly made this is. Um, like the Doctor stuff always looks really, really screwed up. Uh, we've also got what I think is supposed to be a griffin, except it's got a vulture's head. 
Yeah, I would I would call that Griffin like with a vulture head instead. Yeah. And then we have a cassowary with a lizard's. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Uh, I would say that's more uh, Komodo dragon looking with the cassowary head. Yeah. It's definitely it's definitely from that from that line of thoughts, and, and um, a screaming person face on a dog, hyena type thing, um, with spikes, and then of course the doctor that ruined all of these creatures to begin with. Uh, in the description yeah. here, it probably tells me what these things are supposed to be. Um, no, not really. The sea stallion. <laughs> uh, the mighty hippocampus is the sea stallion. That's the we'd actually seen the hippie, the um, hippocampus once before, and that got teased. But everything else here is new. I, I really like the look of this stuff. Honestly, it, it's disgusting, um, hideous. The the but last they, they horrible, one with the human head. Yeah. The the last one with the human head and cat like body. I'm. That could have been done better, I think. I that mm -hmm. one of all of them, that one looks the most like afterthought idea of the ones. Like the the first three look amazing. This one's just kind of like I you will know, like I the will say this. You've known about the project for a month, and you get it done the night before. That's what this is. I feel like the paint job on that mini is letting it down. Hmm. The lizard looks really nice and detailed. You can see the detail in the feathers and everything. Mm -hmm. the, the, yep. the griffin, there's been a lot of time spent on that. And look, I'm not, like, the, their painters are great. We know that their painters are great. Uh, but I think, I mean, they've tried to do a fur texture in areas and then others it just looks like, I don't know, I, I just, I, I think it needed something more. Because some areas just look like skin. Some areas you can see where they've tried to add fur detail in. But, but I don't know. If they were going to do fur detail, they probably should have gone all the way, paint-wise. Um, if they were going to make it skin, they probably should have gone all the way, paint-wise. It kind of feels like they've tried to do both. I, th I don't know. I think that's where it's letting it down for me. I still... I, like, it's. I'm not sure I could do better. Um, but... I don't know. I think that may be where your thoughts are coming from. I like the doctor though. You know, it's amazing. Well, yeah, the doctor looks good. Yeah. Um, which one are you gonna talk about next? The holy summons or the the holy Theophant summons? Theophant huh? The holy summons is next. Okay. Um, first of all, first and foremost, the first uh, priest there with the the stick hovering. Yeah. That is such a simple yet action like pose yeah like it looks so good and so um dynamic i guess i the thing yeah, i really the, like the word i want to use escapes me stoic yeah he's kind of just standing there stoic and menacing but there's so much happening on the base that it makes it look more action than it really is yeah yeah it's and it's, it's a, crazy it's a good floating miniature that doesn't look like it's going to snap do you know how rare? No, it is? yeah, because if you if you look at the back view, like there is significant contact there. That's yeah. that's nowhere near as like you know, really games workshop. You're you're having this entire thing supported by that. Are you crazy? And they do it continually. Um, yeah. Um, and then the the next one with the the water pose. Uh, again, it's it's a very very dynamic. Lots of action in the sculpt. I love the fact that it looks like all of this water seems to have come out of the Holy Grail. Oh, hey. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure the, that's supposed to be the Holy Grail. Even if the the first really one's out. an airbender, the second one's a waterbender. Where's the earthbender and firebender? Probably in the next box. <laughs> um, and then the next one, we have this, the Holy Summon. And I'm looking at this and I'm going, how is this holy? How is this not a demon spawn? Like, this is really messed up looking. And obviously, that's the point. Um, I mean, especially if you read the Bible where they describe things like this, none of them are look like 
the way angels are described. Even angels aren't described the way that people are thinking of them. Um, and then the next one is just nightmare material, and I'm all for it. It's amazing. Yeah. So very clearly the Vatican in this are not lovely people. And we already know that anyway because, well, that's in, in the back. It, the story makes that very clear. Um, for th- sure. Off the box, I feel really silly in saying it, but the first miniature is my favorite. The one uh, that you said Absolutely, you like. yeah. It, it's yeah. far better than it has any right to be. It's just a guy uh, that's standing there, but it's amazing. Yeah, if, if if I were to if I were to have this many though, I I could not um, resist the urge to paint blue arrows on the limbs and the the forehead. Yeah, that's fine. Do you want me to do what you want? Oh my god, I just realized. Yeah, like airbenders when they become masters, they shave their head and get the tattoo and stuff like it. This dude's yeah. got a shaved head. He he's screaming for the the arrow tattoo. He's an airbender. Uh, you asked a question if we want to talk about the Theophant of Sinai. Uh, I think this might be a firebender, even if it's a monster made out of fire, but why not? Mm, I, I wouldn't say it's a firebender, but it's yeah. Earth, it's... it's a fire elemental is what it is. Yeah. Um, I love the fact that he's I, got I, I candles would... as part of it, too. Like, there's a candelabra down the bottom. Mm-hmm, yeah. I would say this is probably one of the... I would say... Best fire elemental uh, minis I've seen. I do feel like I've seen this mini a hundred times, but it's a really nice one. The fact that they've got a can well, in there makes this for me. Because nobody ever... What, what, this actually has something that shows you where the fire came from, and nobody else ever does that. That's what So, so what, what does it for me is, if you look at all your elementals, there's the assumed face like yep. there's a, you know yes that's the face but it's not defined this guy's got a mask that mm-hmm. is defining the face yeah like i I like that little extra detail now that being said i still think the best elemental minis out there uh just because they're you use them out of the box you don't have to do anything with them are the ones you get from uh reaper minis oh, the, yeah. the clear acrylic yeah they are that they are. are colored appropriately like um uh, they won best painted several years ago at Adepticon with a thousand suns. The there was the the little summon of you know an aeromental type being or whatever that the 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 uh, librarians could do. Do you know what they did to represent that? They got air elementals from Reaper, put them on a base, and said, "Boom, there it is, done." Yeah, and it looked absolutely amazing. And they didn't have to paint it or anything. No, because they come in the so, clear, the, the clear acrylic plastic and. Well, not clear acrylic. Yeah. Yeah, that were really well done. Colored. Colored acrylic plastic. No, it's not not acrylic. It's it's a different sort of plastic. It's thermoplastic, I think. Anyway. Uh lovely stuff from TT Combat. Um It's all been completely overshadowed by our previous story because nobody is talking about this right now. Um, what was the previous story? Uh something about bases. It doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> Um, very, very quickly, one last follow-up from the last episode. Personally, I really love the UCM behemoth, light behemoth. I think, for me personally, that's that was the winner of what looked the best. Uh, I do completely oh. understand why you say the PHR. It is gorgeous. Uh, but I think it's the first. Well, for me, it's the first time UCL, a UCM have won any of those battles. So, yeah, the, the, the I, I don't know if, it, like, what the PHR one, they did the same thing, but they did it differently with yeah. it, but kept it looking the same. Which, th- that that takes them doing with PHR, because, yeah. well, they have to look a certain way because they're PHR. Um, with the gold, no, I, the Shaltari gold, it, it looks... I look at that and I, I know it doesn't, it's not exactly the same, but I look at that and I see a diamond. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. really similar. If um, you look from the middle, the middle from where, yeah, just cut it in the middle, the back uh, half is the same shape. Yeah. The back half fun. is the same shape. The front half is a different shape. Mm. Anyway, that, that was my thoughts on those. Yeah. Because I just so, remembered. Good thoughts. Um, 
little company, uh, Games Workshop. Yeah, some small. Do they make some tools? Small, that, no, that they make games. Apparently, it's a workshop where they make games. Oh. Um, so we got a few things that was revealed this weekend. Uh, we've got a new Night Lancer coming for the Horus Heresy. So this is a plastic kit version of something that we've seen from Forge World, World in the that's past. Resin. So yeah, pretty much. Oh wait, is that? No, I don't know. I could be wrong. Uh, Forge World is resin, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be a plastic kit. I could be wrong, but I thought that was. Yeah, I, 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 I've noticed that things have gone along. Like Games Games Workshop has been pulling the the Horus Heresy more into their umbrella from Forge World. I mean, it's the same, it's the two heads of the same company, but. Games Workshop has been slowly moving it in, so they um, need to do something about Forge World because Forge World is just—it's—it's it's an embarrassment but, in my opinion at this point. But yeah, anyway. Forge World for the longest time was known for their resin, and and they're still now known for the resin, but for the exact opposite reason now. See, the problem Forge World is still doing things in exactly the same way they always have. And don't get me wrong; the detail is amazing when it works but quite frequently you have to you have to get them to repost it because it's come out of disaster um, yeah it's the, the 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 quality of forge world stuff is becoming more and more of of the uh the fine cast it, it's been disappointing because most of the rest of the industry have taken what they learned from there and improved on it and yeah anyway forge world is I have an unpopular opinion of Forge World. People don't like negative talk about Forge World. I have very little positive to say about them. Um, all right, next up. Scrabix, that's not entirely fair. Scrabix Plague Pack. Uh, this is a new kit that's coming for Underworld. I really like this because, well, it's Skaven, uh, but also it's really pretty, which is really weird yeah, these to are, say about disease. These are, so, these are some really good looking rats. Um yeah. And, and and it'll be it'll be a pain, but the those little smoke effects they have going there, yep, they have such a potential to look so good, yep, like like they do here. Like the person who painted these has exceptional skill, and they've done a very good job of making these look very good. Yep. The thing I would like to do if they were mine is I would want the smoke to be. I would start with that same green, but I would finish it in a darker gray than what they've used. Just to make it feel thicker. Yeah. Because that almost looks like cauliflower. Or a bone. Uh, hello, cauliflower makes you fart. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I really <laughs> I really like that box, though. In fact, it's probably the highlight here for me. Um, yeah, but my favorite, my favorite one of those six is the 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 more of a the the rat, the giant in the, the stone, yeah. the middle and the the middle and the bottom, yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you on that. Uh, next up, we have something for you. Uh, we've got a new um, Iron Head squat for Necromunda. Um, he's very pretty, I guess. There's not really much else. To that say. uh, he's that pretty. pickaxe. Looks uh perfect for uh piercing some uh some uh Xenos uh Tyranids or or uh some uh uppity uh Imperium. Sounds like a plan, yeah. And uh, then everything else from here is uh Black Library stuff, so this is all books continuing stories. Um because the story will end when I tell you that it ends. And so on and so forth. Uh next up we got the final preview of the Cities of Sigma range. So we've kind of been looking at these as they've gone. They've been kind of very hit and miss from most of our opinions. Um, I mean, there's certainly been stuff from this line that we've liked. There's uh, been others that we looked at and went, ooh, that's gross. Um, and I don't mean in a so ugly it's gorgeous kind of way. I just mean in a way of, well, it's just gross. Um, I quite like the throne. I love the fact that there's a skeleton on the bottom half of it. I don't know why there's a skeleton on the other half of it. I'm guessing it's the person that was in the role before the new guy. Um, I, I quite like that. Th there's clearly a story behind this miniature. I just don't know what that story is. Uh, worship um, aspects of the God King Sigmar. 
Anyway, I don't know. Uh, the Iron World Great Cannon feels just like a updated version of one of the cannons from from Fantasy, which is exactly what it should feel like. Um, Except for the fact that, you know, it's not dwarves. If, if there's just going to well, be an true. updated cannon, it's going to be the dwarves. Like, they're going to be the ones pushing the boundary on technology for a cannon. I'm sorry. Well, the Cities of Sigma is... No, but the Cities of Sigma is kind of a little bit of everybody anyway. So they're probably happy yeah. the technology from the dwarves. Uh, the fact that somebody's drinking behind the cannon is a little odd. Uh, I uh, love it. Ha- have you... Uh, have you never, like, you know, been close to or dealt with artillery? You're going to want to drink. Well, that's fair. <laughs> uh, oh, he's optional. You don't actually have to put him there. There's also somebody that's loading the cannon. That's cool. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh, plague mask. Yeah, the plague mask feels very random, but plague masks are cool. They just are. Um. The, uh, the next one's the... Uh... The dude with the uh, the fairly uh, substantial axe and then the the helm with the bear on top. It's not a bear helm. It's a bear head on top of the helm. Yep. That uh, dude looks... He he needs to have shorter legs and like a stockier torso. Like that. That's a dwarf character right there. It does feel like, like a dwarf, doesn't it? I also, oh, God, I, yeah. I love the really try-hard, desperate-looking street ninja that they have. Like, this isn't a ninja. It's somebody oh, that's just it's... trying really hard to look like one. Um, Super hard. Yeah. Like, uh, it's it, it's like uh, the assassin from Assassin's Creed. Like, you the... know, the whole, like, blending with the crowd. Are you kidding? You have, like, there's no way you're blending with the crowd. You look like an assassin. Yeah. Well, to yeah. be fair, like, ninjas never looked the way that we think they do. That is a completely yeah. fictional. Like ninjas oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. never looked like that at all. Um, the fact that they try to sell that as history is hilarious because everybody knows it's complete BS. Um, I, I'm sitting here saying that it's like that they're looking really try hard. I mean all of this in complimentary fashion. Like that is very deliberate. There's nothing accidental about how try hard that looks. Um. And then we're back to the start, pretty much. Uh, I also love the horse that, like the the cavalier marshal, is gorgeous. The, the yeah, that that looks pretty. But that's a painting. Despite there. D- despite the the basing, which I hope you just glue the horse onto it. I hope that's not like part of like you have to do a lot of modeling work to get it detached from it. It looks good. Yeah. Um, could go the, either the way. Giant on that. T- the, usually, they're pretty good with that. They're usually pretty good with it. The issue yeah, is I, I, the way that it's sculpted. You are going to have to have some sort of raise in the base there somewhere. I don't. As long as I could, like, it, I don't have to use the tactical rock that they provide. If I could do my own cork modeling and make dirt hills or mounds and, and have it sit on there, I'm fine with that. Yeah. The the forced inclusion of a tactical rock. Heaves me off. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, of course, finally, we get the reveal of the artwork for the Battle Time. It's the first new artwork we've seen in this edition, so I will give it a thumbs up because I'm sick of seeing recycled artwork. Um, it uh, it does look pretty good. Yeah, I actually, it's um, really nice. Yeah. Um, reveals are all really nice it, here. Honestly, it, it 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 feels very Empire, though. Yes but I don't think that's accidental. Uh, I mean, from a world perspective, it would be accidental because there's no yeah. way that they could know what the Empire was, but I don't think, like, from a design point of view, I, I think it makes a lot of sense sure. that they've done this on purpose um, because they're very clearly trying to go the other way with Old World. Um, Honestly? My favorite, I don't know. It's either the bear guy or the horse. I think it might be the horse for me. I'm uh, the the, the dude that looks like he should be a dwarf is my favorite. Yeah, because you're anything if not predictable. <laughs> uh. 
It, if they were to redo classic dwarves for for Sigmar, I would cry because then I would have to get those. I'm still crying and like, I want Lords of Calderon still just because dwarves and airships. I want them, you know. Like, yeah, it is a really cool no. idea. Um, next up, uh, War Cradle. Yeah, no, yeah. Sox is gonna be sad. We're talking about this without him because, uh, from what I've already looked at here, this looks really cool. Oh yeah. So we've got an independence battle fleet set. So this is more of a, hey, this is an easy buy-in for the game more than anything else. Because we've seen some of these ships before. Um, but this is this is a new set. It's a battle fleet set for the game. Uh, that's mm -hmm. coming in August. Shows off everything that's coming in it. It looks like this one must be a mixture of resin and plastic again. Because very clearly the large battleship is resin in that one by the look of it. Can we address the unique choice of the flight stand going into the crotch of the big flying robot? I hadn't even noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, the big flying robot, the flight stand is coming out of the crotch instead of the back. Usually flight stands, it goes straight up the bottom or it's been coming off the back. This because is of the way that he's been posed. Yeah, it's coming. Th it's this is like... very phallic. It's a little bit too high to be phallic, but I get your point. It's a robot. It could be, you know, as phallic as you want it to be. No, like, it, it's it's a little bit too high in the body. It's not actually crotch. It's just above. But in saying that, you could glue it wherever you want. Um, I, I really like this. I think it looks amazing. Um, Really, really nice looking set. Uh, we're also getting... Our first look at some Bastion Squadrons for the Empire Sky. So these are just like, this is an add-on set for what we were looking at last episode. Not last episode, episode before. Um, more Flying Cities. So obviously I love them. And then the highlight for me, I think might be the Normandy Farm set. Because this is straight out of Sniper Elite. Like This is like perfect World War II terrain. It's really pretty. Um, that is, that is really awesome looking. Yeah. It's all pre-colored low way um, that you're looking at it too. Also, like, it's, you know, it's, it's one of those things like, look, there's an old tractor. Yeah, true. And the truck. But you can do amazing things with MDF. You really can. Oh, Yeah. So a little bit of a smaller one. Um, one thing that um, I think it was was it Shay and I. It might have been Mark and I were talking about on our Discord this week. Is I'm kind of worried about how long it's been since we've seen anything from Wild West Exodus. We haven't seen anything since the new player starter set came out, and that was well over twelve months ago. ages since they've done anything for it and i'm kind of worried i want something from wild west exodus please i don't care what it is i just want something anything because it's your big but it, it's kind of getting to the point now where i'm i love dystopian wars but I, I want them to start spreading out amongst their different games again because only concentrating on dystopian wars is becoming an issue i feel because like you should be trying to keep all of the games running. Anyway, one last story. Canada. We were talking about Canada earlier. Why were we talking, we about, talking them about them before? We wasn't talking about them for any particular reason. Hi, Canadian friends. I'm doing that because I know it annoys you. Uh, one in particular, which is my ex, that she'll never hear this anyway. Um, okay, we got World War Two Canadians coming from our... KX miniatures and the sculpts on these are amazing. Uh, these are all digital files, so you would be 3D printing these. Uh, but these look phenomenal. Like they look straight out of history, like they feel accurate. Um, I like the fact that they're including a guide on how to paint late war Canadians uh, because. Is, is this for an existing game or. Well, you could fit this anywhere you wanted, really. 
Uh, I mean, I don't know if they have a game. They're just talking about how their 28 mil slash 156 scale world. Gotcha. Okay. Miniatures, but uh, they're clearly like, this is, these are miniatures that you could use however you want. Bolt action is probably how you would use them, but you could use them however you want. I think they've done a really nice job here. They look phenomenal. I also love the tank because that's just crazy. I've never seen a Canadian tank. I mean, I know that they exist, but I've never seen one. Um, I, I really like this. Uh, add-on packs, there's a bunch of printable bases that you can get um, with some really nice-looking bases, actually. I quite like those. There's also commandos that you can print, which look like Green Beret-type things. I'm guessing that they're... That they're Commandos were the equivalent of Green Berets. Do we still have Green Berets or are they gone now? Yeah, they're still around. Okay. Uh, and there's also American and German stuff that you can print out that obviously belongs to previous stuff that they've done. Uh, and then we're getting into our stretch goals. It starts immediately with a sniper because, of course, it does. Um, machine gun teams there's a multi-part kit that's coming which appears to be like an extension of something they've already done but obviously now you're getting it so that you can build them different ways which is nice they're doing the same thing with the commandos um it's disappointing i don't see an unlock for war crimes why would the canadians be involved in war crimes that's more an uh, american they're thing. like no, no, Can <laughs> Canadians are one argue of the with worst. Me on that, you know it's true. Uh, absolutely, I can. Canadians are some of the worst war crime offenders there there have ever been. No, oh, fair enough. Um, the Otter LRC is. I mean, it's an armored car, but I actually kind of like that. It almost looks like a mech head. I kind of want to take the wheels off it and then put it on top of a giant robot. Uh, I think this looks really pretty. I don't remember how I found this. It might have actually been something I found on the On Tabletop website. I don't remember. It's just really pretty. Um, I suspect it, if this goes off, which it seems to be going off quite well, uh, they're currently at 40,000 Australian dollars. Uh, so it was a 2,000 pound goal initially, uh, and they're currently at 21,000 pounds. So it's going really well for them. Uh, I can see this keeping them busy for a while because not all of those ex not all of those stretch goals are things that are sculpted yet, which is normal for this sort of stuff. Um, because it adds it adds to your workload in a good way. I really like what I'm saying. Honestly, I think it's really really good. Uh, yeah. thirty eight pounds for a personal license. There's a commercial license available for a hundred. So I think that's fairly reasonable. Um. You can't get any early bird stuff. There's still nine days left on this at time of recording. So I think it looks really nice. Any thoughts, George? Uh, they do look really good. Like, as far as minis and malls go, they do look really good. And then finally, I don't remember if I said finally earlier or not, but finally we have a brand new core set coming from Atomic Mass Games for Marvel Crisis Protocol. So the old original box set has been out for four years at this point, uh, almost to the day, because it came out at Gen Con last time, um, in 2019. Um, oh, no, sorry. No, it didn't. I stand corrected. It was in November. It was shown off at Gen Con. Sorry. My memory is failing me, apparently. Um, and at the four-year anniversary this November, we will get a new box. Uh, the new artwork looks very comic booky. It kind of looks like it's been sun faded, which is a weird choice. But anyway, um, the new box set is coming in multiple languages. So they're doing with this what they've been doing with Star Wars, basically, which is all of the languages will be included in the one box. Just because it's easier from a shipping and everything point of view. And then, like, not all of the heroes from the original set are here, but most of them are they're also releasing the old stuff separately so that if you didn't buy this and you still want the old stuff you will be able to buy the heroes and the miniatures in separate boxes um for those that 
buy this and maybe you want some of the old stuff as well. Um, I think the highlight of the box for me is probably the Black Widow that's just severing reckon, an Ultron box. Reckon, it. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say reckon the Ultron mini. Yeah. Or the, the, yeah, the Ultron bot. Um, I don't know, that Ultron looks really good too, but why the hell is he wearing a cape? He does Did he wear, not he... watch The Incredibles? <laughs> no caps. Um, no the caps. Only, <laughs> the only issue I will say, and I'm not the only one to say this, everybody has said this at one point, is that if you are fighting someone that's not Ultron, that's going to look out of place, I guess. I don't have a problem with it. I think it's really nice. I mean, we don't like forced display bases, but... Why can't she be attacking something? Uh, my hope, mm-hmm. my hope is that the base is that the um, pieces for that body are separate from the pieces for her, because then you could put her on a flight stand and she could just be kicking whatever's in front of her, uh, or you could destroy an old mini and put anything you want there. The jaws of your enemy. I don't know. Get a sculpt of your ex and do it that way. I don't know. Um, there is more pictures out there if you want to look for them. They're basically just repeats of what's in the top banner, though. So we've got the very classic Captain America pose, except in this one, his chest doesn't look like it's three times bigger than it should be. Uh, it is the Rob Liefeld picture, but they've done it in a more natural pose and not his interesting drawing choices. Um, I don't mind the Iron Man. It's probably not my favorite, though. Um. I like the new Spider-Man. Oh, I don't like the Spider-Man for the same reason you don't like the Black Widow. The Venom is part of the pose. True. Yeah, he's jumping out of the out of the symbiote. Yeah. Um, it's it's not that I don't like the Black Widow. I'm just a lot of people don't like it for that reason. I was just acknowledging it. I actually it, it, really it's, like it's 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 my same gripe of you know you have to use the tactical rock. Yeah. Um, I would argue that I suspect that that leg and the venom is going to be connected because I don't see how that's going to be separate. That will be a problem. You could easily just paint it as water, though, I suppose. Oh. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, I really like the look of the box set, honestly. Um, I like yeah. the fact that we're actually getting minions for those that should have minions now that minions exist. I like the fact that we're getting two different versions of Captain Marvel. Um, it's really nice. I like it. Um, and honestly, it was probably time for them to actually do an actual. Yeah, because what was it now? Like, how many years is that box? Did you say three years four. now? Four years? It's been four years. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's it's, it's it's time for an update, a refresh. And it's always good to refresh your products because if you don't, people event well eventually they stop buying them, um, and it becomes a problem. Um. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. Indie. Definition. Independent. Type. Slang word. Jargon. This week, we're talking about a company that was pointed out to me by Shay on our Discord. I was asking our Patreon for recommendations for modern day snipers because I wanted to find something to use as a proxy for Entropy City because I had this idea of something I want to do for an event that's coming up. Um, So I wanted to, like, something that looked modern day ish. Uh, and this is one of the suggestions that he had for lines, uh, because I was looking through infinity stuff already, uh, because there is a couple of factions that are close enough that feel like they're real day. Uh, and then you, you, you didn't want to obviously... use a Vindicar assassin. No, no, I didn't feel like it was <laughs> close enough. Um, there's also Spectre miniatures that do a lot of modern day stuff, but I didn't really... F- I mean, there was a couple in there, but it wasn't really anything that jumped out at me. He suggested some this as a source that might have been good because, in his opinion, this is the best modern day miniatures that you can get. Uh, honestly, it's hard to argue with him because these look amazing. Uh, so, yeah, I'm actually- looking at the, the fan painted. The... Middle far right picture. If you click on that, um, I would argue that every single one of those minis looks like it's from your game. Oh, this is modern day, a hundred percent. Um, 
when you're talking about far right mini, which one are you actually talking about? So fan painting. Yes. Go go, go back to the. So and then there's the the talking... grid, the far right in the middle. In the middle. With okay. The, uh, Thank eight, you. With, with the eight minis. Yeah. Oh, actually, no, like, those in particular definitely do. Yes. Like. They got that that literally just everything. That's brilliant. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, w- w- when did you sculpt these and design these for your game, Bruce? Like, that's how like <laughs> appropriate for your game they look. Yeah. Um, and I've moved across onto the second website because this actually shows off more of the miniatures than the one that we was looking at initially. Um, these guys actually have an Australian distributor. Like, seriously, I could buy this stuff locally. I can't do that with any of the other modern. Di- oh, that's not entirely true. Um, I mean, there are other options that I was looking at, but this is the the moment he showed me this. I looked at this and went, "Ooh, this is going on as an indie," uh, because it was that good. Like seriously, it was that good. Um, and that was regardless of whether I chose to go this way for the snipers or not. Uh, I actually ended up going in a different direction for the snipers, but we'll talk about that later. Not because I didn't want these, uh, but because I found a cheaper way of doing it. <laughs> I 3D printed some stuff. So, um, there's a two-player starter box for 160 bucks that comes with a whole heap of stuff. Um, so we've got what some... eleven US dollar. Yep, absolutely, absolutely gorgeous stuff. So here's the thing about this miniature race, George, and this is something you will appreciate. This is run by a veteran. Quite literally. So all of this stuff is designed to be accurate because, surprisingly, he knows what he's talking about and he knows what he's looking at. Um, he well, says except that- for I, I, I see a couple of guys where you know their their lead arm is just out and not supporting everything, where it would be tucked in for more stability. But no, no, no one ever does that because it doesn't look as cool. Yeah, yeah, fair. I love the dog too, by the way. <laughs> the dog is wearing goggles. I find that hilarious. I don't know. If that oh, hey, it. hey! I'm gonna I'm gonna mention this real quick because Shay put it up in the chat. Now he's listening. Ten uh, percent of sales go to fighting veteran suicide. So, oh, uh, yep. That, that is a that's a huge thing. Um, uh, the the little charity things like uh, Amazon has a little thing where it's just like certain you know you know like. The little uh, donation things like mine by default is Wounded Warrior Project just because you know Casey's is a, a Swiss Mountain Dog group. Ah, oh, did you finally read my message? <laughs> yes. What do I not do when I'm on camera, George? I don't look at Discord. That's why I said it to you on Facebook too. <laughs> there you go. Bruce Bruce has a new camera he's playing with. I do. <laughs> um um these these look absolutely stunning. Th- these are phenomenal. Uh there's another one that I could sit here looking at all of this for ages and I probably will again. I already have once. Go to page I believe it's page number 2. Uh page 2. I, Shay is going to know what I'm looking for because he looked at this new and oh down the bottom of page number two, we have the Insurgents, Veteran, and Biker. Yes. I, I, I already did kind of see that. A, accurate-looking bikes, which is nice, because a lot of the bikes I'm using at the moment are kind of sci-fi-ish. Yeah. Just because it's, yeah, it's what I've had. Um, Actually, to scale, I love the fact that there's somebody that's just standing up. I mean, these aren't riding and shooting, because A, that uh, the wheels actually look like motorbike wheels, which is surprisingly not common. Yeah. But then on top of it, your insurgents are amazing too. This particular box set is a print on demand, so this is actually a 3D print that they would print for you and send to you. Some of them are that, and then some of them are actually resin sculpts. It's a little bit of both. Uh, generally, the older stuff is being sold as a will print on demand type stuff. Uh, and you'll notice it's like, it's roughly around the same price as all the other stuff, but you're getting more in it. So it's cheaper because it's 3D printed. 
It's not stupidly cheap, but that's because, you know, they need to make money. I really like what I I'm mean, seeing here, honestly. Like, this stuff looks phenomenal. Yeah, this, I mean, you're, you're talking about prices, and I'm looking at this, and, like, these are nowhere, you know, they're, oh, these are cheap. they're on par with everything else. Yeah. Like, as far as, like, you know, the the quality you're getting, the number of minis you're getting in the, like, what is it? Uh, the first page, uh, Convert Kill Team, uh, there's yeah. six minis, 34 bucks. That's reasonable as hell. It's very reasonable. So, uh, And, like, the sculpting, uh, this is their older stuff again, which is being sold as 3D prints. Uh, this is not just, yeah. like, cheap 3D printing. They have very high-class quality prints. You can go and find examples of them out there very easily. Uh, and you have every sort of option like we have like just just here on the front page we have advised militia that look very much middle eastern ish uh we have african militia squad that obviously look like they're from that part of the world uh we have um russian looking people we have cia type people we have danish frogmen uh, we have female operators. Like you have every corner of the world. There's a green beret force here. I was just talking about them a minute ago. Weirdly, they don't wear berets, but I'm guessing that's because they don't wear them in real life anymore, are they? No, they they do only in our garrison. They don't wear them in the field. Yeah, that makes sense because there's no tactical advantage to wearing a bright green, bright green. Right. Well, well, no, a, a, a beret won't stop around to the head, whereas, you know, like an actual tactical helmet will. will so, yeah. But there is a lot of different things here. My understanding of the rule set is very, very small at this stage. I only know what Shay has told me uh, and what I've seen. Bruce, of- Bruce, second page, top row, far right, hired killers. Yes, yeah, with the, with the drones they, and stuff, yeah. They have drones. Yeah, there's actually a couple of drones and, elsewhere as well. So the, the one thing also I do like is uh the, the operator there on the left, his little VR headset thing. Um, It has nose art with the, the, the fighter jet uh, mouth on it. Yes. <laughs> um, Something Shay has just said as well which I'm looking at on my phone so that it doesn't ruin the recording. Um, the, the, the 10% going to veterans, that's from the sales, not from the profit, for the record. Uh, they have two games. In-country is their modern-day warfare, which is what we're discussing, but they also have Kill Wager, which is high sci-fi. Um, so you will find some stuff here. Like this, the hired killers, for example, is kind of sci-fi-ish, especially with those helmets, and that's why. But again, like, they have everything here. And we're only on the second page, and we've already seen all of this stuff. Um, I want to look at the Jackal team. Um, we've got Naval Seals. We'll have to look at those. Uh, I'm just opening things at this stage to look at. The marked civilians. All right, so I'm looking at, on the third page, we've got the Jackal squad. I'm sorry, the Jackal team. This is another group that have a drone and again this is more sci-fi with your squared digital looking helmets and well stuff. and and dude uh second from the right has got uh robot legs from the knee down oh he does too i didn't even notice that. oh that's embarrassing i didn't even uh, see uh, that uh, and the dude on the left has a an exoskeleton uh mm. brace on his leg so it's st- but here's the thing. This is hard sci-fi, but it's still f- it doesn't feel that removed from real life. I mean, it is, but like he's not in a mech suit. It's in something that you could see is maybe five or ten years away, even if in real life we know that's not true. But it well, feels like well, it's not that I, far I, off. Yeah, I mean, the, the stuff that I've seen on Exo stuff and everything, I mean, it looks like the current technology, except for, you know, there's not a power cable, you know, running off the back of it. Like, you know, there's... They figured yeah. out a battery pack in this, so I mean, th- this is reasonable, realistic, yeah, sci-fi. Uh, the naval seals look really nice. <coughs> this is another one of your digital ones that will be print on demand, 
And, I mean, you may want to argue with me, but these feel like the naval seals that I've seen pictures of. I'm happy to be corrected if that's not right, but they look right to me. I mean... I can't really, like, find any argument of, like, mm. the, the only thing I can say is, like, you don't have a sniper, which that's always not a thing, though, either. Like, well, this you is know, only one box, too. There probably would be yeah, a sniper. Yeah, I mean... No, like, everything seems... Look nice. like, like, here's the other little small deal, too, too, which, you know, a lot of people gloss over don't think about. If you look at the Navy SEALs, all of them have, like, some sort of I wear on like yeah. glasses and that's the one thing that's always glossed over like a lot of these guys they don't walk in like this because crap's flying at your face you'll have safety glasses on on top of that and you know keep the crap out of your eyes beyond goggles beyond your NVGs you know it's the detail is really freaking phenomenal yeah it, it's very clearly done by somebody that knows what they're doing here's something else that I'm noticing and it's a really small tiny detail that doesn't matter all of the bags have have the mole system on them look at the back look at the front of his uh, of his um of his little pouch there it's all little little mole, mole, mole oh, yeah. strips on them molly molly but that's something that doesn't matter it's a completely pointless thing to put on a miniature why is it there because it's there in real life and the person that sculpted it knows that. It's it, and actually the the front of the vest has it as well because you'll notice that's how everything's connected to their vests mm -hmm. in certain pictures. Well, even if you look at like a couple of them with the the pistol on the the hip or yep. on the the side of the thigh, even that pad that the the holster is attached to is Molly. Yep. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, I also opened up. There's a Ranger. -er. There's a ranger assault element as well. Um, so this is... Who do the rangers fall under? That's army, right? Yeah, that's army. Yeah. Really, really gorgeous stuff. This is actually an example on this of what these look like when they've been printed. So I, I don't see any examples of layer lines on that at all, really. This is another... If I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure this is another print-on-demand one. doesn't actually say i could be wrong on that this may actually be a proper proper thing um but again it's just really really gorgeous looking stuff like i don't know who their sculptor actually is but whoever it is needs to be applauded it might be the actual owner i don't know if they're doing that third party or not um i would assume that it's most likely done all in house But that is an assumption because I don't actually know. There's, their sculptor is the head goon. It the, is the owner. okay. So yep. Uh, the Russian uh, Alpha Force. My God, e even the security like contractor guys, they look like the the textbook like jackwad security contractors. That's the one I just opened up. Oh no, it's not the one I opened up. I opened up the other one. So, security team. Oh, yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 100%. They look like that. They're, they're very much looking like they're trying too hard. <laughs> I love that. That's brilliant. The thing I like about security contractors is that you can easily play them in multiple different ways because you will have them and they're there to do the job and they will but you also got those ones that are only there to kind of big note themselves. And like in movies, security contractors will either go one of two ways. They're either the evil militia or they're just trying to get their job done. Um, and you could easily or they're just trying, either way. Or, or they're just trying to collect, collect the paycheck because yeah. that's what they are. They're a mercenary. So um, really, really cool find. Uh Thank you to Shay for uh, letting you know about that because that is some really, really good looking stuff. Yeah. On the very last page, and this is the last one, oh, I've been skimming through this. On the very last page is one that I'm probably going to buy at one point because it's a SWAT team. And 
SWAT team is probably something I should try and have at some point, realistically. And the special it, weapons and tactics? Yes. Ooh. I mean, I'm not sure that I'd actually have a SWAT team, but I'd probably have people that's trying to pretend that they're a SWAT team. Like, these look phenomenal. The detail of these finishes are fantastic. You even got a guy with a pump shotgun. Which I guarantee you is freaking full of slugs for blast out a door lock to kick in for the guy in the breaching shield to lead the way in. Yeah. And then the the dude with the shotgun, he's got his uh his uh carbine on a jackass rig so he can just like pick it up, lock in place and go. Like, dude, yeah. this these are so realistically accurate yeah and that this is very much their thing I, like even this the, the sci-fi stuff feels like it's accurate um or at least accurate for what you would expect and i like the fact that they're kind they're trying to do a little bit of everything and it's not like like there was russian stuff that that, that we looked at at one point and it's not like like they're, they're trying to present russia as they are they're not trying to vilify them whether they should be or not, it's completely irrelevant. For the, for, the, for the game, you just want to present everything as factually as possible. So, uniforms and that are all good. Uh, they've been designed to look realistic. Um, it's, I love this. It's brilliant. And I'm definitely going to be getting some of this stuff at some point. I just don't know what I'm getting. And I don't know if I'm getting it for Entropy City or not. I might just buy some stuff so I can have a look at it. So, thank you very much to Shay. I do appreciate that. It's not the direction that I went in, uh, but we will discuss that during Hobby. All right. What have you been up to, George? Using colorful metaphors and getting frustrated with my 3D printer. (laughs) What actually happened to your 3D printer? Well, so I was doing a test print of like the the panel that you know slides in place on the organizer. Yeah, and I uh, I had to do it vertically because my bed's too small to do it laying down. I figured it shouldn't make any difference. Woke up the next day because it's an extremely long paint and uh, a long print, and woke up and the uh, screen was red, and it was a fault with the uh, bed. And the the solution was I sent some videos to the Anycubic uh, support staff, and they said, yep, your bed's screwed. We'll send you a new one. Got the okay. new bed in place, got it auto-leveled, all that stuff, and I am having issues with, if I'm looking at the, my printer and my control panel's here on my left, the back left, or sorry, right, the back left corner, nothing's sticking to it. Oh, okay. Odd. And, and and the the next thing that's weird too is so like I've done the leveling, I've done all that stuff, right? And that back left corner, the brim, it lays down and it touches the bed, but it doesn't it's the the uh, the height is still off. But then the rest of the area is fine except for the front left and front middle. It's too close and it's smearing it out flat. Yes, yeah, so this is why I, this is why I keep on giving up and then starting again with mine. I've never gotten mine right. Yeah, I always like, get frustrated with it and give up before I, because my resin printer is so much easier. Well, and and I'm I'm not going to disagree with that because you know of how resin printers design. The issue is I'm not going to resin print a carrying no. case no, or. The the other thing too is with the the organizer stuff, the magnetic sheet that you put in. I have to set a timer for three hours. When that three hour timer goes off, I peel the sticky back off and I set it in place while the printer's going, and then it prints over it and it it's locked into place. It's a really cool design. The problem is is if that brim is not down properly, and I rotated the the print and it helps some to get it off that far corner, but the, the filament will cool too quickly because that brim's not properly laid down. And so that corner will tweak. It sounds like it's not heating up properly. 
That's but that's it also it acts like it's a leveling issue too, which well, yeah. and I've and the the next step, which uh, I, I was chatting with the guys in the 3D printing channel about it, was possibly needing to shim it, and I don't want it. So I mean, it still works great for some stuff where it's like I'm using like the center of the bed. That works fine and great. So, like token accessories, stuff like that for for gay maids, like that's cool and everything. But I'm I'm contemplating and debating like doing another printer that has a bigger bed, so some of the stuff like I can print it laying down instead of having to go like, you know, eight inches vertical. Like I can do it, you know. Yeah. But then I'm you know in the you know like. Rud, like, what if the like the bed does the same thing? It's hard to say. And and JP is messaging me one. Bamboo is he's suggesting a a, a a PLS solution. Yeah, I I don't have that kind of money, JP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. But- that would be cool to have one of those. I, I'm thinking more of like the Ender uh, uh, Maxes or, or whatever, the, the big ones. I think what he's talking about, they're the, um, the dryers, I think, I think is what he's talking about, to stop your filament getting moisture in them. I could be wrong. I think that's what he's talking about. Oh, sure enough, yeah, oh, there no. is one that's... Uh... No, no, no. Yeah, it's, it's a 3D printer. You're right. Well, that was still not terrible, but yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I'm cringing at the, the 480 for one of the Enders. That's uh, larger. Oh, my God. That's in my ears. What's that hurt. Ears? I actually clicked on a video. Um, So that's been about it. My my bench is a disaster. I've been trying to glue magnets. Yeah. Uh, How's Atropy City going? Uh, it's been going all right. That way. All right. So I mentioned that I have found other options. So this is one of the two that I got printed. Hang on. Let me... Nope, that doesn't help. So he's kind of in a kneeling pose. It's not going to focus very well, I don't think. But yeah, he's kind of in a kneeling pose. My plan for these is that they're going to end up being on a rooftop. So he's going to be kind of be like looking over the rooftop down. I'm going to show you what he's going to be on in a second. I also have this guy who's literally flying. No, it broke. Yeah, it broke. Oh, bollocks. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to reprint this one now. Um, but just it's super glowing. This is not going to be worth it. But yeah, he's sitting. Right. He's sitting down, and I really like that. I, there was a couple I found that were sitting down, and I'm going to show you why I really like this idea. I have a trash pile heap here that I've oh, also nice. 3D printed, and on top of it is two mattresses. So my plan was that I was going to have them sitting on the mattress on top of the roof, like this is something that's just been piled up on top of a roof at somewhere. Because, oh my oh my god 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 you 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 have to do something when you paint that as just like a little easter egg that's just so gross get some uv paint and paint <laughs> stains on the mattresses <laughs> oh no that's oh. no i'm not doing that that's you, terrible you won't be able to see it unless someone takes a uv light and shines it on the mattress i know oh Ah, uh, damn you and your ideas. I've also been trying to get my scenery up and going. Oh, that looks good. So this was just a very flat grey the last time you saw it. Let's get that out of the way. So, yeah, it's coming along. Like I actually went out on my way home from a barbecue yesterday. I went to a store and I bought an actual brick red because I didn't have one. Um... I want to do like another because I've just done a brown wash over everything at this point, so I want to highlight things. Yeah, up. the grates and stuff on the side are all rusty. 
like there's rust all over the staircase and stuff and it's all brown and gooey and horrible and the plan for this is that yeah it would sit up up on the rooftop somewhere maybe not necessarily this one i want a higher building I have also, that also go. was a very standard grey and brown the last time you saw it, but it's all been yep. painted up to be actual, you ready? Needs a bit of weathering, so the weathering hasn't been done on this, so I need some washes and stuff to go over this yet, but that's fine. I also haven't done any graffiti on anything yet, that's going to be my last step. Um... No, I probably should do the graffiti on this before I do the weathering. You should do both. I should do both. Do graffiti, do weathering, then do graffiti. Oh, because, yeah, people paint over the top of graffiti, yes. Yeah. Um, what else have I been... I've, um... So, these... I bought already painted, right? Because these are prototype mm -hmm. ones that were printed. Not printed. They, these were made by uh, Knights of Dice, and this is part of the stuff that he was clearing out uh, as he was getting ready to shut the business down. But I also bought this one, mm, yeah. which was a display, and I wanted to try and paint it up to look as close to that as I can. Now, it's not there. So it needs some browns and that yet, but I'm quite happy with that, honestly. I'd gladly see yeah, that side looking... by side. Uh, it just needs a little bit of brown to be dry brushed over it, really, is all it really yeah. needs. But I would, I, I might even just leave it at that for now and just move on and be lazy. Um, but these are just like, these are kind of for, like for elevation. Um, I, in my last order, uh, I got another one that's six by nine. So it's kind of like in between this. So then I've got like a lot of variation that I can do. Just because elevation is a good thing in gaming. Yeah. I also grabbed an AK interactive book, Doomsday Chariots, because in theory this should have a lot of stuff that I will find very useful. I mean, this is all designed for post-apocalypse, but it'll have mm -hmm. stuff that'll... I've been looking at this for probably a little bit over a month at this point. I haven't read through it yet, um, but not everything in here is going to be stylistically what I want to do, but the techniques and stuff will still work for the world that I have pictured in my head. So from that perspective, it should be perfect. And what arrived a few minutes ago, which I haven't even opened, but I can tell you what, it, what it's going to be. This is Dave Taylor's Dungeons book that oh. we looked at like 12 months ago. So that will have an unboxing coming on it at some point this week. Which you just reminded me. It's right over here. Oh, this one's heavy. Um, this showed up too. Nightmare Cathedral. It is a board game that's based on the uh, artistic works of. I'm not going to try to pronounce the name because I haven't uh, uh, looked it up yet. But it's a a um. It's based off of artwork. Okay. Here's a little preview of the back, so. Nice. But it's a, uh, it's a uh, Polish game, or a Polish company, I guess I should. Worker placement? Should say. Huh? Worker placement? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, I, 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 I just, I jumped on it because. Oh, is that it... box is heavy. Um. That the, the concept and ideas were solely based off of this Polish artist's like artwork. Okay. So and then it, it was as a as a pretty low key like it was on GameFound. It wasn't on Kickstarter, but here is the only extra add on, and it's a it's a cat. <laughs> like, that's it. That's fun. There I'm... was no bells and whistles with it. It was here's the game. If you back this, it's a collector's edition, and you get actual like minis. So. Nice. Uh, the last thing I have been doing is some more artwork. This is a collection of images that I have done through uh, AI because I'm not an artist. And at this stage, I can't afford to pay an artist. I do want to be able to do that at some point. 
but I want the game to be right first before I start investing into artwork. Uh, but basically what this is, is this is my sign that will sit on the table. Um, and it will just sit there and people will be like, oh, so he's playing like a motorbike game or something that people can look at as they go past. I also did an edited version of this that I gave to the NWA for their website uh, because they kind of had a preferred format. I just so that I could have something a little pretty. A friend of mine was looking at this very closely because online I did a digital version and he's like, what the hell is that? Because if you look at the motorbike, there's some serious problems with that motorbike. Yeah, that front wheel doesn't look like it'll roll too well. Uh, also, the front half of the actual bike is missing. It's just connected by an arm. If you look, Whatever. <laughs> that, that Harley is the only thing that actually looks right. Most of them have problems. Um, there seems to be something that'll with be AI. It, that it's, they're not capable of fine. doing motorbikes. Oh, no, I, I don't mind. From here, it's fine. No, uh, I, no, I mean, like, you know, like, just not being connected. I'll be fine. Oh, yeah. No, it's fine. Have you um, not seen some of those Nitro Circus guys? Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, a suggestion from the Patreon was that I probably should be putting on here that it's all AI art somewhere, or on the back of the artwork, I should say something about that it's credited towards. Uh, and here's the thing: it's a two-sided poster, quite deliberately, because I want people to be able to see whatever it is from the part. Uh, this is all placeholder artwork. It's not going to be used in any official capacity. It's just placeholder. So, But I didn't want to steal artwork and use that. I wanted to at least have something that was mine. Um, I will not be using any AI work in any aspect of my game long term. I will say that for a fact, for a few reasons. A, copyright has a big question mark on it. And if I do end up making a product out of this, I want it to be mine. Um, because I'd be stupid not to. To the point where, if I do eventually pay an artist, I will pay an artist to make sure that it's mine. Because that would be part of the cost. Right. Um, but that's future Jason's problems at this stage. For now, I have a pretty little banner. Um, and all of the Anna was designed, all the banner was done by me. So I don't have to worry about people going er but you stole this from there because i didn't and that's basically the only real thought that's gone into it um i bought this for like 15 bucks or something from an office store because it's like hey i know what i want and i just went and got one very very quickly here at the end of hobby time i just wanted to give a very quick shout out uh there is a new youtube channel slash podcast that started up recently in australia called From Scratch to Shelf. Uh, basically, they are talking about Australian game development, specifically Australian game development, uh, like how to, like where to go for. Uh, some of their past stuff is talking about, like, uh, there's a particular thing, like they talk about Twitter at one point because obviously that's a, been a big deal at one point. Uh, they talk about marketing. They've talked about is the ideas in your game safe from theft? Um, so it's it's very much about the actual development itself. Uh, they're starting to kind of reach out and try to get people on as like guests that are in the middle of developing or are about to launch development of games or um, people that have worked on games in the past, just trying to expand their audience type stuff. So I saw them talking about it in the Tabletop Game Developers Australia group and I was like, hmm, I'm going to give these guys a shout out because it's cool. Tournaments, demos, conventions, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, Gen Con is on right now from the 3rd until the 6th of August. So if you don't have... It's tickets, actually it, it's actually uh, over as, as of tomorrow, so... Yeah, so if you haven't gone, you're not going to be going. Because, well, if you haven't got tickets, too late, because uh, it's been sold yeah, out it's, for <laughs> ages. Uh, but you've got tomorrow now, because today's already over. Uh, the Nanawading War Games Association Games Day. So this is a games day that happens every year. It's run by one of the larger war games associations in Victoria. Uh, this is the first time I've done anything with them. Um, I've I've known about, I I know quite a few people that are with the with the association. Like I've known them for ages because it's where I live. Um, but I've never run events before because my game didn't exist. <laughs> 
Um, but yes, I will be hosting a demo table or a a playtest table at the event. Uh, the event starts at 10 o'clock in the morning, goes through to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It's on August the 26th, which is a Saturday. So I'm going to be there for six hours. I have a friend that's helping me out to try and keep me sane. Uh, it takes place at the Central Ringwood Community Centre in Victoria. So I will be doing Entropy City demos and playtesting. Uh, it's a gold coin donation to enter. I get nothing from it other than I can take your feedback on on board, uh, assuming that the feedback is in line with how I want the game to play. Um, there are a lot of people that have been like, "Hey, are you accepting playtesting? Are you?" And I've I have been accepting playtesting with the game for a while. Uh, I've just been kind of dripping it out. The problem is, is that I'm also working full time, so it's when I can actually do it as well. Uh, but this is the first time that I'm doing playtesting outside of my playtesting group. So it's it's a really big deal and it's something I'm rather nervous about. So hopefully it goes well. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm nervous. So hopefully it goes well. And then next on the list is the Weapons Free Drop Fleet Commander Tournament, the 2nd of September in Cardiff, UK. Uh, you can find more information about that at www.thebattlefields.co.uk. Credit to you, um, by the way, for pointing out that yes, that's actually the way that the rule is written. Yes, it's it's weapons free, not weapons hot. Of course, the weapons are hot. They're shooting. Uh, yeah. uh, Warhost official Dystopian Wars Escalation League, sixth of September through the fifteenth of November, a thousand points to start, increasing increasing by two hundred and fifty points every two weeks, up to two thousand points. This is at Critical Hit Games in Saint Petersburg, Florida. That has been um, run by Sox and his friend. Well, I, I don't know if Sox is running it, but Sox is taking part of it. No, he's so. run, he's running it. Is he running it? Okay. He, he is uh, the next on the list. The event. Okay. Uh, next on the list, I don't know if you've heard of this one, Bruce. It's called PAX Australia. I may the have six heard to of it. eight of October. Um, I six to eight of October. Have you? Okay. Um, and then, the, of course, the greatest name for a convention. Northern King Kong, the 24th through 26th of November in Osset, West Yorkshire. Uh, 55 pounds includes a hot lunch Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, there's a lot of big things oh. coming up. Uh, the other thing I probably will mention very quickly, the day before PAX Australia is DevCon. I will also be attending that with Entropy City. Um, it, basically, it's an, it's an Australian indie games developer conference. Uh, where you can oh, take your we, game along. We have a DevCon here, and it's a completely different kind of convention. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, this is like games development. So people that actually work in the industry and that have developed games in the past all kind of coming together and showing off what they've done and stuff. It's a bit of a smaller event, but again, looking yeah, it's forward a, to it. It's a, it's a computer hacking convention here. Oh, okay. No, definitely not that. <laughs> <laughs> completely different. Where does Dev come um, out of hacking? Uh, development like it's just oh okay fair enough yeah that's oh sorry defcon yeah right because De dev is development for game development i couldn't yeah. know where it was coming from hacking i'm guessing yeah, somebody yeah, yeah. corrected so... you in the comments oh uh, uh, yeah she did so yeah it's yeah i was hearing dev from you so yeah whatever um dev like game development yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Valhalla Hobby. Valhalla Hobby are one of our, uh, well, they are our sponsor uh, for the podcast. We really appreciate them. We would not have gettingtable.com without them, like 100%. It, we just wouldn't have it. Um, Valhalla Hobby are a niche game store. Like, they are, they do actually have your regulars. You kind of suggested they didn't, but they do have Warhammer. They do have D&D. &D. Like, they do have all of that stuff. They do have Magic the Gathering but they have a real passion for the indie side of the gaming scene as well. Um, so they have your TT combats. They have your Moonstone. They have your Weird and your Bushido. If you have an interest in anything from the indie scene, you will find it at Valhalla Hobby. Uh, and their prices are actually really good, which is also very helpful. So uh, when we bought the box set for Socks, 
we bought it from here because it was cheaper. Plus, it also helps if you're supporting the sponsors. Because, hey, it helps them justify helping us. So, thank you, Valhalla Hobby. ValhallaHobby.com. GT2305 at checkout will give you 5% off any order over 100 bucks. Patreon.com slash getting tabled. If you're in a position to help us, please do consider it. Uh, we appreciate our Patreon very much. Uh, we, it has its own exclusive, it has its own exclusive channel on the Discord. Uh, there is a link to the Discord. It actually shows up on screen every time I discuss it. Uh, if you want to join, you're more than welcome to. You can also find it via our usual socials as well. Gettingtabled.com is the website. Uh, the Facebook is facebook.com slash getting tabled from a social media perspective. It's probably the most active that we have. Um, we are also on YouTube, youtube.com slash getting tabled. Please subscribe. Uh, we're trying to get that view account up. Um, we put out videos at least once a week. Um, our Patreon get early access to all of the videos that we make. There is occasional exceptions to that, uh, but it's always explained. Um, and it's, I used to say it was like 80% of the stuff that we do is early access. It's way more than that. Uh, it would be lucky if it's not 99 or 98. I, I, I think the only thing that is not exclusive only access for the Patreons is the audio version of the podcast. Yeah, pretty much. Um, email, gettingtabled.com. Sorry, gettingtabled at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to reach out to us, reach out to us. Honestly, we would love to have more community feedback. Uh, or more community discussion. Get in on the Discord. Get in on the chat. Everybody on there is wonderful. Uh, Twitter, at Getting Tabled. Instagram, at Getting Tabled. I have a Twitch. It's not very active at the moment. It's kind of just casual. I was kind of penciling in September as the time where that would go back to full launch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For listening to Getting Tabled. Music used in this podcast was created by Eric Mataris at soundimage.org.